Greetings everyone, welcome back to the carpet. Today on the carpet I have some boxes to open. I'm not really into unboxing videos, but uh, we'll pop these open. We got some gifts in from a viewer. We got the Snickers over there, lounging in the chair. Anyhow, let's uh, open this first box up. First up, we have this homebrew amplifier load for a four or eight ohm switchables. We have the banana jack connectors or screw terminals. He said I might want to shorten that wire in there. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Each are seven watt resistors. So yeah, this could come in handy. Or I could use the parts and uh, get these things put in use. I bought these a couple years ago and never really used them. I used them in a couple videos, but I always wanted to make a load for amplifiers. So yeah, this, as it is even, it would come in handy for testing. Uh, next up, we have a car stereo amplifier. Uh, Carver brand. In their bluish, grayish, anodized aluminum. Looks like the same color of that PA amp. Uh, what do we have here? Outputs, loudspeakers, high-level inputs. Uh, looks like we got power over here. Mobile power amplifier M240. Output power 2 by 120 watts. RMS. Any electrical engineer knows that there's no such thing as Watts RMS, but we have a good fuse. What is that fuse? Looks probably like a 20 amp. 32 volt, 30 amp. That's a 30 amp fuse. So yeah, I'll uh, see if this thing works. I think he said it worked the last time he used it, but that was probably years ago. Looks like a earlier model from the 90s or 80s or something. I'll have to see what I can find on this thing. But yeah, there you go, a Carver car stereo amplifier. So in this box we have more Carver stuff, These little cube amps. We have uh, owner's manual M400. And we have another one here. It's a M400T. I don't know what the difference is, except one little darker color there. So let me pop these out of the box here. So yeah, we have these, looks like about eight inches each dimension, cube. What would that be, around 20, 20 or so centimeters? So we have these little carver cubes and they're supposed to be non-functioning condition. So we'll have to look at it. Maybe they're repairable, maybe not. Well, I'm sure they could be repaired, but if it's worthwhile, that's the question. So you can bridge these. There's more transistors in there. So uh, I think these use their multi-rail. You know, being in such a small package, like that Pro Amp, that PA Amp, I got working it really wasn't broken that carver pa amp had three rails so maybe this is something like that 
I mean, the size it is, having all those transistors, it must be one of those Class G type jobs. But yeah, this is good fodder for making a video. Let's take a look at this owner's manual. Two hundred and one watts. I had to get that one in there. RMS per channel eight ohms. Two hundred fifty watts. That's it. One kilohertz. Three hundred watts. Four ohms. Uh, Five hundred watts bridged. I wonder what the difference is between these. Same wattage. Point 0.5 versus point oh five THD. 250. Everything else is the same, unless there's a misprint or something. Yeah, when I look at these things, I'll go through the manual. More depth here. Washington, 1980. So these things must be pretty old. See, so like that uh, grayish, kind of bluish. Well, this one mainly. What color they used on their equipment? The case is all aluminum. I'm sure it aids in the heat dissipation. But yeah. Thanks a lot for these gifts. I don't know if the guy wanted me to mention his name, but um, we'll just say Brad. I had a couple people ask me why I don't answer my emails. And, good question, let me try to answer that for you here. Well, I'm not a big channel. I have 50,000 subscribers, so I'm getting bombarded with questions and comments with my uh, John Audio Tech at Gmail account plus the YouTube video comment section. I just don't have time to answer everybody's questions. And when I do, usually it's a sentence or two. Right now I'm busy with work so I don't have a lot of time to make videos. I still want to get videos in and I try to squeak a video in here and there. A video like this unboxing, there's really no preparation. I just turn the camera on and talk about stuff. But the other things I actually have to prepare for, like the chip amp done right. I have to design and solder up a board and um, put it through the tests. So those types of videos tend to take a lot more time to make. So it might be a little dry on videos and... Like I say, I, I can't answer everybody's questions. You know, YouTube's my secondary gig. My primary gig is keeping me busy, my main job right now, so... I can't repair stuff. I have sometimes people ask me if I can take on a piece of equipment and repair it. Well, I'm not in the repair business. You know, I, I might repair stuff in videos like this. It's good material for making a video of, but I'm not in the repair business. If I was in the repair business, I would need more equipment. I would be a lot more thorough in checking parts and things. Putting the stuff through a lot of tests and many hours of operation, which what I would consider a proper repair. But, you know, I don't do that. I'm not in the repair business.